Well, here we are, another deck, and as a result, another video. So a little bit of context is needed about how I brewed this commander. How many of you know about Popper? I've had some run-ins with it before at my LGS, pre-pandemic, where one of the associates, Albert, shout out by the way, you beautiful bastard, brought with him several of his own Popper decks. Popper is the format where you construct a 60 card deck consisting of only common cards, with the exception of a few notable mentions. Now, I know what you're saying, but Crow, you're an EDH channel primarily. What are you doing talking about Popper? And that's where I would tell you, hey there, Planeswalker, so right you are. We're predominantly an EDH channel. Hey, while you're here, why not subscribe and stick around till the end of the video, where I'll have something special waiting for you. Yes, you. A sub is fast, easy, and free, and it helps us out a lot. Did you like that little plug? I know, I'm amazing. But do you know what else is amazing? Combining two super fun formats into one. And today we're mashing Popper and EDH to make the unholy creation of PDH. So a lot of you must be wondering still, what is PDH? Well, to explain it quickly, it's when we pick an uncommon commander. Oh, I heard my name. Who's calling? What's up? No, 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 not you, Cole. Good job on the video, by the way. Hey, thanks a lot. It was great working with you. Anyways, we pick a commander and then the rest of the 99 is, yep, you guessed it, commons. So with that in mind, I did something I thought I'd never, ever do. Play Simic. I know, I'm ashamed of myself. I spent so much time bashing it online and poking fun, with peace and love, at other Simic players, but it's just so strong, so pushed. I I, I couldn't help myself. I got, I got lost in the Simic sauce. Oh, hey, hey John, how's, how's things going? Hey Crow, how's it going? Remember a few videos back where you uh, drag Simic through the mud? Um, I have no recollection of that. Oh yeah, well let's uh, revisit that, shall we? Oh well, at least I'm not a Simic player. Hey, what's that supposed to mean? What was that? Did y'all hear? Oh. Yeah, you did. Oh wow. Yeah, no, I did say that. Wow, I'm. I'm so sorry, bud. Sorry for hitting you over the head with a rock? Wait, you didn't hit me over the head with a rock? Anyways, who's the commander of the Simic deck? Well, that would be none other than Eutropia, the twice favored. This commander is mean. For one, a green and a blue, we get a 2-2 human wizard. Meh stats, but its ability is where this can get out of hand fast because Eutropia comes packed with the Constellation ability, which was one of the highlight mechanics in the Theros block, and it revolves around- Enchantment? Eutropia shows off exactly why it's twice favored by saying that whenever an enchantment comes into play under our control, target creature we control gets a plus one plus one counter and gains flying until end of turn. Talk about pulling double duty. So in this deck tech, we'll be reviewing some of the key common cards in the deck that can synergize with our commander as well as some creatures that benefit from our commander's ability. So what are we waiting for? Let's jump right in. We're gonna start off with the cards that don't outright give us the game, but can help us duck and weave if we're facing off against a bunch of scary creatures, or just need to fill our hand with more value. The first four cards do pretty much the same thing, and that's getting our enchantments from our deck into our hand. The four cards in question are Commune with Spirits, Benefaction of Ronas, Commune with the Gods, and Crewfix's Insight. Huh, I just noticed that a lot of those cards refer to gods and spirits. Anyways, spirits lets us look at the top four cards of our library, Ronas and gods lets us look at the top five, and Crewfix lets us look at the top six. It also has the added benefit of allowing us to stock our hand with up to three enchantments, with the next and only one close to it being Ronas, which lets us put a creature and an enchantment into our hand. Speaking about hand, let's talk about the cards that refill that hand. 
Opt, preordain, and steady progress all allow us to draw a card after doing something else. Opt lets us scry one, preordain lets us scry two, and steady progress... Let's, uh... Let's not worry about that. Moving on, next we have the evasive cards. Some can turn the tables on an opponent while others can give us the victory. We've got Inspire Awe, Tamiyo Safekeeping, Rip Tamiyo, Fog, and Raven Form. These cards allow our creatures to not take any damage from threats or straight up remove them from the game to begin with. Next, what enchantments will we be playing to give us the most bang for our buck when it comes to causing the most damage? We'll strap in and get Enchanted? Enchantment! Let me just say, this deck finally made me suck it up and buy a Mystic Remora. And with that and Rhystic Study in the deck, you'll be drawing car- Hey, um, uh, Mystic Remora and Rhystic Study is banned at BDH. Son of a bitch! Eel Umbra and Spider Umbra each give our creature Totem Armor, which has the enchantment get destroyed if the creature were to. Eel has Flash and Spider gives our creature Reach which is handy since most, if not all of our creatures don't come inherently with flying. Want more ways to give your creatures flying? Favor of the Overbeing and Spectral Flight each pump our creature for two and give it an additional form of evasion, with Favor even granting it Vigilance. If it's Simic Color, otherwise you get one ability and one buff. Shielding Plaques and Elephant Guide make it so that our creatures stick around for a little bit longer with plaques making it hexproof and guide creating a free elephant if and when it dies. You know what they say, an elephant never forgets. Last, we have some cool other enchantments that play into any of our strategies, those being Arachniform, Ancestral Mask, and Ophidian Eye. Eye just makes it so that we can potentially draw into one of our answers sooner whenever we do damage. Form turns our creatures into every creature type, again, pay this no mind, and Mask is our coup de grace giving our creature plus two plus two for every enchantment on the field. Commander damage is still a thing, y'all. Speaking about damage, hey, how's it going? You know Popper is a really hard format to brew around, and sometimes we just want to come in quick and kill our opponents. So that's why there's an effect on the deck. I know, I know, Crow, you're kind of infect crazy. It's how I got into magic, okay? No, don't be defensive. You said you wouldn't do this. It's a popper deck. If, if you're, you're going, going to pull this out at a table that's running two years and crypts, then, then you're, you're completely justified to play Brilliant Sliver and Glistener Elf for our one drop infect creatures, showing our opponent we're playing to win. Hell, the Sliver even works really well with Arachniform, making our commander a 5 5 with flying infect sliver? That's pretty scary if we play it on turn three. Itcher Claw Mirror, Blighted Agent, and Blight Mamba are all our two drop infect gang, with Mirror pumping itself if it's blocked. Not bad if it's already been pumped from prior enchantments. Agent being unblockable, again, really good if we're just constantly pumping it, and Mamba being able to regenerate itself by paying its mana cost again. This one snake isn't going to say bye bye anytime soon. Next is Rotwolf, Cyst Beer, and Sabretooth Cobra. Wolf just wants to kill creatures so you can draw more gas. Cyst is just here to round out the common infect gang. Frankly, I'm just happy to be included. And Cobra just has a wonky ability. It does one point of poison damage, sure, but then that venom spreads, much like any snake bite. And on our opponent's upkeep, they get another poison counter unless they pay two, draining their mana or their health. Yes, please. Watsy, print more cards like this, please. Finishing out our Infect team is Marsh Viper and Chain Throat Seeker. Both cost a lot and don't do much, but late in the game, it's nice to know that we have these to play to still go the Infect route. Marsh just gives the opponent two poison counters, despite it being a one power, and Throat Seeker, which is a mouthful to say, <laughs> can't attack unless defending opponent has a poison counter already. See, not that bad. The rest of the deck is filled with ramp, like Cultivate and Harrow, to things that tap or remove our opponent's creatures, like Witness Protection which is such a funny card, let me just say, and fall from favor. Top it all off with some lands and you got yourself a deck. What did you think? Pretty cool, huh? If you made it this far into the video, then congrats. And more importantly, thank you. What I want to do for you is actually give away to one lucky winner this exact deck. I've actually been spending time and blinging it out like crazy, so I legit have two copies of this deck. 
sans the Rustic and Remora. So if we can get up to, I don't know, 750 subscribers, I'll sleeve up the second deck and send it to someone. Sadly, with the way the economy is right now, I can only have it restricted to the states, but I'm hoping in due time, when money isn't that much of an issue, we'll be able to do some international giveaways. But baby steps, am I right? It all starts with you. By clicking subscribe and commenting on this video, you'll be entered into our giveaway. Entries will go till the 15th, and we'll announce the winner if we're able to get that 750 on our Twitter. So keep your eyes on that too. Again, it's as easy as subscribing, commenting on this video, and keeping an eye on our Twitter. If we can crush this goal, we'll be able to give you all more content, more giveaways, and so much more. At any rate, I've been Crow. You've been you. Stay classy, Planeswalkers of the Multiverse, and we will see you on your next upkeep. Peace.